Hey guys, even here, so the Mr. Olympia pre-judging wrapped up a couple of hours ago, in case you haven't seen it already, it is up on my channel with my analysis and commentary, I analyzed all the lineups, go check it out if you haven't, so 2022 Mr. Olympia lasted very very long until very late at night, and right now in Serbia it is 1pm, and it's like 6 a.m. in the US, so all the American YouTubers went to bed like an hour or two ago, they stayed up very late, they made some videos, and now they're sleeping, so I'm gonna use this opportunity while the Americans are sleeping to make some more content for you guys, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the biggest disappointments of this show, of this Mr. Olympia, and first I gotta start with Big Remy, and also Nick Strength and Power at the same time. So Nick made a video, he made his prejudging analysis video in which he had no clue what is happening and I was so disappointed. I followed Nick Strength and Power for a long time before I started my channel. Even today I check out what he's doing, what he's making and he, he has a great channel, man. I mean, he has a huge channel. I'm sure all of you guys following me follow him as well unless you find him boring and that's why you're here. I understand that but he has a huge channel with a lot of subscribers, with a lot of views and he had absolutely no idea what was going on at the pre-judging I mean I know he's not a competitor he's not a bodybuilder actually he's just a bodybuilding fan like majority of the people that follow him but he had a channel for a long long time he analyzed so many shows so far he was physically he, he watched Arnold Classic he was at the Mr. Olympia physically I think once or twice so he should know better, he should know that Big Remy was not in the center of the callout because he's not gonna win. I mean, I get him, I was kind of confused as well at the beginning, but then you think about it and like, even Ronnie Coleman, who was like, who is the greatest bodybuilder of all time, he was also compared against the top two, top three every year. They would never just put him aside and compare the other guys because he was winning so decisively. And even at his best, Big Remy wasn't really winning decisively. Maybe 2020, but 2021, Steve Weinberger in a video said that he barely got that win, like he almost lost to Brandon Curry last year. And this year... Pfft, me, personally, I wouldn't have him in my top 6, maybe top 6, maybe even top 7, I could see Samson and Andrew Jack beating him, more likely he's going to be 5th based on the callouts, and maybe because he is the former Mr. Olympia, but I prefer Andrew Jack's physique, and I prefer Samson's physique over Big Remy, Big Remy had issues. Big Remy was kind of always known for his midsection, he had developed abs, he had pretty thick abs and it looked nice, now this year he had a little bit of a bubble gut action, his abs were separated in the middle and they were just washed out for some reason. The next thing was his quads, those dents that he had in them, those bumps or whatever you want to call it, I don't know what is that, if it is uh, scar tissue from injection or it's oil, I have no idea, but it was way more visible this year than the year before, and then his triceps were completely melted, especially his left one. Neither did his biceps look much better, as you can see they were also very small, his arms were down in size big time, and probably the worst thing about him, the biggest disappointment of this show and of Big Remy was his back. He always pretty much had a weak lower back, we always knew that, but this time around there was nothing happening, like he had some muscle in the upper back, but the other half, the bottom half, zero muscle, he completely atrophied and it looked soft and this is, this is the end of Big Remy, I gotta say, look at his left tricep here and his left bicep, his left arm, his, both, both of his arms. Big Remy is definitely not what he used to be, look at the glutes as well, look at the glutes, what are those bumps on his glutes? Injection sites, again, <laughs> infection, I don't know. So Big Remy had a lot of flaws, a lot of trouble, a lot of problems, and I think this is the end of Big Remy, I think this is the end of his career, I'm pretty sure he's gonna retire after this year's Mr. Olympia, is he somehow gonna manage to squeak into top 5? 
maybe I would give him at least 6th or 7th, I think Samson beats him, I think Andrew Jack beats him, but we'll see what the judges will do based on the callouts, he stays in that top 6 for some reason, I mean yeah, the reason is because he's really big, he is big and he's conditioned as well, so his conditioning is good, yeah, he brought good conditioning, but it just wasn't enough, and you might be thinking, it's just the lighting, maybe he would look better if the lighting was a little bit different, no, no, it's not the quality of the photo either, take a look at Hadi Chopin under the same lighting, the photo is taken by the same photographer, this is what a Mr. Olympia winner physique looks like, check out abs and thighs as well, check out the abs, check out the legs, the separation in the legs, Hari Chopin is gonna win this year's Mr. Olympia, I'm pretty confident about that, but this video is about disappointments, not about the pleasant surprises, that might be the next video I make, now let's move on to the next disappointment, which would be the length of the show, the organization of the show, which seemed to be pretty horrible. Uh, Chris Asito made this post where he said that he fell asleep while he was waiting for the open division. He said at 2.12 he had like 5 minutes on stage and the female divisions had like 6 hours altogether and uh, like the majority of the people were on the phones, they were so bored and like it ended, the show ended at like, I don't know, 1 or 2 or 3 p.m., something like that. So it lasted way too long. Long. I mean, I know because in Serbia it was supposed to start at 4 a.m. So I went to bed and I set up my alarm for 4 p.m. I woke up, it was, I don't know, physique, women's physique. I woke up an hour later, it was still a female division, an hour later another female division, and I think it was like three or four hours after that, that open division started finally, it was like 9am in the morning in Serbia, and so everybody who was watching the Mr. Olympia live had to stay up really late, and Chris Asito was mad about that, so he called out the organizers of the show, and also another thing is, going back to the big Ramy and X-Strength and Power topic, uh, in this interview, for example, by the RX Muscle, Chris Asito and Dom Super Sliced both had Big Remy out of that top four, uh, fifth, sixth, or seventh, something like that, and they both saw Hari Chopin or Derek Lansford winning the show. You could hear the same thing at Muscular Development, Jose Raymond, who I respect a lot, whose opinion I respect a lot, he's a great analyst, he knows bodybuilding, he has been competing in bodybuilding for so long, he always has good predictions, he always knows what he's talking about, the way the judges are working, I think he judged some shows as well, he is very confident that Hadi is winning, Derek is second, and that Big Remy is out of top four, Giles Thomas as well did not have Big Remy in his top three, so I don't know, I gotta say it, what the hell is Nick Strack and Power? smoking what the hell was he smoking when he made that video i have no idea big remy is definitely not winning the mr olympia and he's most likely not even gonna be top five i would give him probably seventh but that's just me he's most likely gonna be fifth as for the next biggest disappointment, it has to be Blessing of Audible. I mean, this guy was talking the talk, he was acting like a clown, he was calling out Nick Walker, he was calling out everybody, Ian Wallier, he was telling everybody that he's going to beat these guys, that he's going to destroy them, that he's going to be in the first call out, he's going to be top five or whatever and he was in fourth freaking call out, so not even third call out, Nick, Nick Walker called him out during the press conference, uh, he said he hasn't talked to guys that are in third call out, and that was, I mean, Nick was generous, <laughs> that was nice of Nick, Blessing was in fourth freaking call out, and I gotta say this wasn't at him at his best, if he showed up the way he was at Indy or New York Pro, he would probably be top 15, this way he's gonna be top 25, which is, which is, which is pretty bad, which is pretty disappointing, especially after all the talk that he has done over the past months, so we kind of expected a lot more from him, and this is one of the biggest disappointments of this show. What about Ian Valier? Is he supposed to be in this video? I don't know if I would call him a disappointment of the show, but I don't think he was at his best, and I don't think he thinks that either. Right after the pre-judging, Ian posted this on his story, I won't read the whole thing, if you want you can pause the video, it's a lengthy message to, to his fans, and in this one he says basically, after looking back and trying to be as constructive and as objective as possible, we just missed the mark tonight. 
he criticizes his presentation and posing, he says he didn't make the impression, basically he says that he, his conditioning and fullness was okay, but it wasn't the crispiness that he had earlier that day and during that week, and that he is disappointed that uh, he didn't really showcase what he was working for for the entire year, he had a little film of water, uh, and uh, he was a little bit flatter as the show went on, he wasn't as crisp, as as hard as he, as he wanted to be, and he says that he's not happy with 10th to 12th, which is, which is where he's gonna land, he's not gonna be in top 9, because you guys saw who was in that second call out uh, when they called out Samson back in it, so there was Andrew Jack, William Bonac, and Hunter Labrada was also there, but Ian did not make that call out, so he's gonna be uh, 10th, 11th, or 12th, just like this guy right here, Mikhail Krizo, who also went back and forth with Ian before this Mr. Olympia, and I gotta say, they were very, very close. Different physiques altogether, but very, very close in terms of muscularity and conditioning, so I don't know who's gonna place ahead of who, but they're gonna be close, very, very close. Unfortunately, I have to mention Mikhail Krizo as well, because, not because of his conditioning, or because of his muscularity, his size, what he looked like on stage, or whatever, he actually looked pretty good, I mean, his conditioning was decent, his back was also pretty fine, his glutes didn't look that small, so I, I would say I was pleasantly surprised uh, with his physique overall, but what I was so disappointed at was his tan, he did not look polished, he was not dark enough, and so he stood out at that Mr. Olympia stage, everybody else had much, much better tan, I know he's very pale, but for example, Ian Wallier is also very pale, but his tan at this show was fine, Hunter Labrada also extremely pale, but he did whatever it took, and look at how much darker he is than Michael Krizo, so it was definitely a tanning problem, and it would look so much better if Michal actually got this figured out, I hope next year he's going to be uh, properly tanned, but if you put Tan aside for his first Mr. Olympia appearance, I think he did very well, I think he has a lot of potential, and he was, he said in his story recently that he would be happy if he's top 15 at his first Mr. Olympia ever, which would also be a huge success, but no, he's not gonna be 15th, he's going to be, again, 10th, 11th, or 12th, in my opinion, he's going to be 11th or 12th, I think Ian is gonna be but we'll see, maybe something will change till the finals, but overall, as a bodybuilder, Mikhail Krizo is not a disappointment, his tan, however, was. The next biggest disappointment would be Andrew Jack, who was not in the first callout. I thought he deserved to be in that first callout, at least to see him, at, le at least to see how he compares against the very best, because from the front and from the sides, I think he would stand really well against the top six, I think he's that freaky, he's arguably the freakiest bodybuilder on that stage, from the back, it's a little bit different, his back was definitely underwhelming, so were his hamstrings, so also from the sides, you could see that he was lacking those hamstrings, but I still think he deserved to be in that top six, at least to see how he compares, unfortunately, we haven't got to see that, and I think that's pretty disappointing. The next thing I wanted to mention that I was also very disappointed with was Hunter's back. He promised, in press conference also, he said that he is going to have a completely new back. And that was simply not the case. His back was arguably worse than it was last year. And that was really disappointing to me. I thought he had the entire offseason, he did not compete, he was prepping only for the Mr. Olympia, he was training hard in all of his videos and photos that he was posting, he looked like he made a ton of progress, but as you can see, he digressed, he looked worse this year than the last year, maybe it's a coaching mistake, maybe Ben Chow didn't do his job very well at the end, maybe he, was, maybe he just didn't peak properly, maybe he was just a little bit too flat or something like that, it could be the case, I think that's the case, I think he's just too flat, but what we saw, we saw saw, we only can judge what we see on the stage, and me personally, I was very disappointed at Hunter and his back mainly. And lastly, Brandon Curry, so he also had an entire year to progress, to make progress, and he was in Kuwait for a long time, he promised also that he made progress, that he was bigger, and maybe he was bigger and fuller, but his conditioning wasn't good, and his legs did not grow at all. I think they were just as they were last year, and his upper body may have been bigger and fuller, but it just made his legs look even smaller, 
maybe he was just fuller overall, but his conditioning suffered, and also his stomach was distended a little, and this is the first time we saw that. So I was also kind of disappointed in Brandon Curry, though I think he might, he's probably gonna end up in top 3, he might even be second instead of Derek, but... I still think Derek is going to be second. We'll see what's going to happen until the finals. But I was I was disappointed at Brandon and his legs mainly. And that he didn't improve them one bit, if you ask me. That's what I see. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. And for more Mr. Olympia content, which is coming soon, stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys. And bye-bye.